So, I popped into High House Insurance to see if they could quote for my house insurance rather than using the internet. High House got a great deal. So, to celebrate, I bought a posh hairdo. It made me look beautiful, gorgeous enough to become a highly paid model. I then won Celebrity Big Brother. I had an affair with an MP. Now, I'm promoting a doll of me that says, Cool, blimey, you're well fit. <laughs> Happy things happen when you talk face to face with High House Insurance. See if we can beat your home insurance quote from the internet. Find us on the High Street Selsey or call 606 552. Hello and welcome to Selsey Internet Radio. My name's Keith Barnes and in this week's programme we have Jean Pratt who's going to be telling us what's going on in Around the Village for the coming week. We have an interview with a chap called Roger Barrow who many of you may know from Selsey Business Partnership. Despite the fact that Lynn's decided to take a rest for a little while, she has sent some recipes in so we shall have a recipe. And finally we'll have an article from Mike Nichols telling us about the sports facilities that are available in and around the village. So, cup of tea, feet up, sit back. And my first guest in the studio this morning is Jean Pratt. And Jean, as usual, is going to be telling us all about what's going on in the village in the coming week. Jean, what have you got for us? Thank you, Keith. Hello, everyone. On Sunday the 18th, and again on the 25th of January, the Methodist Church are inviting people to have tea with them. Tea on both Sundays will be from 3 until 4.30, Transport can be arranged. All are welcome. If you can come, please call 01243201616. On Monday the 19th, Platinum Home Care are holding their weekly social club at the Selsey Centre from 2 to 4.30. Qualified care assistants are there to help those who might need it. Some of the things that you can enjoy are bingo, puzzles or craft activities. Coffee, tea, cake, biscuits provided. For more information, telephone 605675. Again on Monday the 19th, there's a dementia awareness session, 10.30 to 12 noon at Selsey Library. The Memory Assessment Service and Living Well with Dementia teams are at the library to enable you to find out more about dementia and the support that is available should you need it. Helpline number is 01403 213017 or you can call the library on 602 096. On Monday evening of 19th of January, Selsey Camera Club are holding their meeting at St Wilfrid's Church Hall, Church Road, 7 for 7.30. They have a competition for the best action photograph. Visitors are welcome. Further information, contact Joan Taylor, 603143. Tuesday the 20th of January, Selsey and District Carers Support Group who can offer practical and emotional support to all unpaid carers in the community, are having a coffee morning at 109 The High Street at 10.30. Why not go along and find out more? There is a 24 helpline, number is 601039. Tuesday, 20th January, St Peter's Fellowship are meeting in St Peter's Church Hall at 2.15pm. They have a silent auction and a beetle drive. Non-members welcome, which for which they make a small charge of £1.50 per meeting. This also includes refreshment. If you want more information, contact Veronica Holloway, 607-356. Wednesday the 21st of January, the Crafty Nutter Club meets at Selsey Methodist Church. 2 till 4 in the large hall. Information, Alison 601032. Thursday, the 22nd of January, Manhood Trefoy Guild meet at the Selsey Centre starting at 2.15. It's their AGM. Non-members are welcome. To find out more about the group, contact Mary Collins 602849. Friday, the 23rd of January, the University of the Third Age meet at the Selsey Centre. Doors open 2 o'clock for 2.30 start. 
This month, if you would like to find more about Bunny Girls, why not come along and listen to Gillian Parker, who will be telling about her life as a Playboy Bunny Girl. And this could certainly brighten up a dull January. For more information, you can look on their website, www.selsey.u3a.org.uk. Also on Friday the 23rd, Darby and Joan Club meet 2 until 4, St Peter's Church Hall. Members who wish to be picked up call Jill 604-1871. Saturday the 24th, the Venture Club have their garage sale. They are also looking for volunteer drivers, particularly for a Sunday morning. They also need help in the office, mornings or afternoon. Contact numbers are office 605115. They will be there from 9.30 to 11.30, 2.30 till 4, Mondays to Fridays, or 9.30 till 11 on Saturdays. And don't forget, the Dead Beats, the Walking Football Club, are still looking for the next Bobby Charlton to join them at the Selsey Centre on a Thursday from 6 till 7. Further details from Martin, 607721. Now this doesn't happen this week, but it's a very important message for those who have electric blankets. Has it been checked recently? If not, why not bring it along to the fire station on Thursday the 29th of January, where from 9.30 till 4.30 they will give a free safety check. That's all for this week. I'm going to hand you back to Keith now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Jane. Well, a mine of information, as usual, and very importantly, the message about the electric blankets. Um, if anybody's got one, and it's worth getting it checked out, we don't want to see you cooking in your bed. My next guest in the studio today spent 43 years, or maybe I should get it right because he worked on small margins, it was 42 years and seven months <laughs> working for John Lewis uh, Waitrose, where he ended up as manager of their flagship Canary Wharf outlet which I believe had a staff of about 700 people. But So I'd like to welcome today Roger Barrow. Roger. Hello, yeah, well, it's uh, very, very great of you, of you to invite me. Thanks very much. Yeah, that's right. I was uh, I worked 43 years with John Lewis and Waitrose, and my last job was head of their flagship store in Canary Wharf, which was a very high-pressure job. So I wasn't unhappy to retire um, from that job a bit early, um, about seven years ago. Right now, did you did you go to John Lewis straight from school? Or? Well, yeah, forty three years. That would have made me. Very, I was only a child when I started. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. I went straight from school to John Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, forty three years. Any company nowadays is a long time. And and of course, there's this thing now that uh, maybe working for one company all that time is not a good thing, and and that managers should move on to different companies. I'm not sure. I so I sort of. Uh, agree with that too much but I know some of the bigger companies that I've worked with over the past couple of years they seem to think that you know if you were a manager worth your sorts you, you, you'd move on every two or three years uh, which does seem to happen a little bit especially now LinkedIn seem to be advocating that you know you should move around as well. Well but, I often thought of moving around but in fact it was such a wonderful company to work for they look after you so well the facilities they provide their staff are just superb and um, you know working with them I learned uh, they helped me um, get my yacht master offshore certificate and they get, they've got a sailing club and I learned to sail with them I get uh, some fabulous trout fishing on their river test at uh, in Hampshire um, couldn't imagine not doing that so I stuck with them and of course 43 years with a good final salary pension they're pretty rare these days absolutely yes so which which I suppose is what allowed you to move on to your your next uh, love, which was sailing, as you as you learned to sail when you were working for John Lewis. So you decided you'd start up the Fisher Boat Company. <laughs> yeah. Well, I set up the Fisher Boat Company from scratch. When I first uh, retired, I did a, a year or so um, as a motivational speaker. Um, I went out and about to the different companies uh, speaking about um, customer service and, and how to inspire uh, selling staff in retail shops to, to provide the best possible customer service um, and I spoke with uh, some pretty big groups the, um, at the Emirates Stadium I, I spoke to the uh, uh, local authority management conference to 500 people and 
and I spoke to the Wembley Management Conference, um, Wembley Council, for about 400 people. And that was quite fun, but it was too much like my old work in John Lewis and Waitrose. So uh, I gave that up after a year, set up as a business coach to help local businesses with their small businesses, with their marketing, their websites, their uh, uh, profitability, advising them, you know, how they can turn their business into, into a more profitable operation. And that's been really quite fun because I've met a lot of very lovely people down here in Selsey while I've been doing that. But again, it wasn't my first love. My first love was the sea and sailing, and I've been visiting uh, this part of the country all my life because I had a boat in Chichester Marina. So I set up the Fisher Boat Company. Um, I'd met up with uh, David Freeman of White and Freeman, who designs the Fisher Boats, and uh, I'd met up with uh, a Sri Lankan uh, chap, marvellous chap in Sri Lanka, who builds boats, builds the most beautiful boats. So we set up this business, so the boats are built in Sri Lanka, um, if I can sell one, I import it here and then sell it on to the customer. So how do you get it? How do you get it back up to Selsey from Sri Lanka? Ah, in a in a container. <laughs> yeah, it all. I just had this vision of I've just bought a brand new Rolls Royce, and by the time I collect it, it's got fifteen thousand miles on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a it's a bit of a long way to sail. So yeah, yeah we stick them on, we stick them on a container boat. Yes, yeah, but that's um, that's been okay. It's not a big money making business. It's more of a hobby business. Mm. Um, which pays for itself. Uh, and with that, I've also been designing uh, boat names and boat graphics, uh, which uh, are manufactured for me by Excel Graphics locally. Um, and they just keep me out of mischief. And, uh, you know, have helped me get involved with the local business community. Which I believe you're quite heavily involved in, uh, in your position as chairman of the Selsey uh, Business Partnership. Yeah, that's been a very interesting uh, time. I, I joined the Selsey Business Partnership about six years ago and uh, then took over as chairman about a year later. Um, and it's a great little little group of people. I mean, it's, it's run by a, a, a group of local business people, all volunteers, they all give up their own time, uh, with the aim of trying to help support local business, advise local businesses, provide them with uh, networking opportunities. We have a, a monthly informal um, networking uh, to get together on the first Wednesday of every month. And uh, we've tried to organise a, a few uh, business events locally, but more rec most recently the, the Christmas market in, in the old cinema. We, ha we supported very heavily and helped organise the big D-Day celebration. At the, that, was, um, that was a wonderful... Yeah, uh, it was fantastic. And uh, a couple of ladies in the high street did a lot of work to get that, to mm. get that going. And we gave them all the support that we could um, for that. And, uh, you know, we've now developed a pretty good website, which has got the uh, the number one business directory in, in Selsey. Every, there are more businesses listed on our directory than uh, anywhere else. So it's the place to go if you want to find um, you know, a local business. Um, and all, anyone who joins, any business that joins us, it costs absolutely nothing. Um, and uh, those listings on the directory are very Google friendly. So very often, if you'll search for a local business on Google, at the top will come their listing on the Selsey Business Partnership ah. website. And is it open to any type of business? Is any type of business locally, yes. So any type of business or business person. You know, it might be a sole trader, it might be a big business. So we've got carpenters and plumbers on there. We've got big companies like Ocean Air and and Bun Leisure on there. Oh, uh, right. So any local business, and um, uh, it's open to, and it's you know, it's going to gradually become a very important resource for people, I think. Mm. So anybody that uh, that really needs to know about it and what it's about could actually buy tickets for your dinner at the end of the... Oh, now, yes. Uh, or, or is that already a sellout? <laughs> because I do know that it sells out very quickly. Well, it's uh, slightly early days. We, uh, we, ha we have been organising now, this is the third year we've organised the... Selsey Business Awards and this gives um, businesses the opportunity to go and say to their customers hey you know did we look after you well uh, why don't you come and vote for us um, in the Selsey Business Awards and we've had hundreds of votes come in this year um, and we're about to do the, the judging fairly soon. Must be some big families in Selsey. <laughs> <laughs> well we do uh, the judges are pretty quick to notice when you know yeah. the same surname pops up uh, but um uh, it's been uh, a great success. We've, uh, as I said, we've had these awards now uh, uh, for two years. This is our third year. And there are a number of different categories in the awards, um, su suitable for most people. Uh, the voting this year closed on the 17th of January. 
Uh, the judges will meet um, secretly and decide uh, from all the votes and nominations and what people have said about the businesses. Uh, will decide who the uh, winners are and who the runners up are. Um, those top three shortlisted uh, nominations will be informed, but they won't be informed who actually won. And then on the 28th of February, we have the the Grand Gala Dinner mm. at Bun Leisure, which is a really great evening, uh, when the winners are announced and the awards are presented. It's a black tie event. Um, and even though we haven't yet got to the stage of judging, we've sold more than half of the tickets for that dinner. No, I, I do know that it, yeah. it, it, it does sell very well. Well, um, it is probably the number one business social event in, in Selsey. I, I, I very nearly dropped a, a monumental clangor because I, for my sins, I'm a singer. And uh, I'm trying to organise an event at the town hall to raise money for Macmillan nurses. And the date that I pencilled in was the same day. <laughs> oh, dear. And thankfully, I was quick enough to spot it and, and oh, okay. thought, well, Salesy Business Partnership and my little fundraiser, probably no contest, I'll move. So, <laughs> so I moved it to a different date. Well, if we but, could help uh, you promote that, you know, we would very much love to do that. Well, that's very nice mm. of you. Thank mm. you. Roger, rather than uh, remind you too much of, of the early days and how, how long it is since you started out with John Lewis, you know, when a loaf of bread was probably about sixpence on it. Yeah. That's for, for those younger listeners, that's anybody under 50. Uh, six pence, six old pence, is the same as two and a half pence nowadays. And of course, when uh, when Roger was starting work for John Lewis, that year Sony brought out the first ever home video recorder. That's right. Now, uh, that will give you some idea how long ago it was. You could buy a new E-Type Jaguar for £1,873, and you could fill it up for pe with petrol for the equivalent of... 25 pence a yes. gallon. And a gallon is equal to about four and a half litres. That was in <laughs> 1965, and my salary when I started in John Lewis was uh, eight pounds and ten shillings a week. Which wasn't bad money, I, <laughs> if I remember rightly, because I think I was on about six quid at the time. But, and you know, uh, the thing stayed with you. I mean, the thing that I, I learned working for John Lewis, um, and the thing that was sort of sunk into me, has been with me all my life, is that the most important person in the whole world to any business is the customer. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> and that saying that the customer is always right is absolutely true. You don't win an argument with a customer, you just lose a customer. Mm. And there are not enough businesses that recognise that these days. <laughs> Certainly not from what I've seen. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, if I can send that message out to all the businesses in Selsey, your customers are more important than anything else. They talk to each other. And particularly with social media now, you, know, you get something wrong, and the next thing you know, it's spread around social media. So look after your customers. And, and you would think, uh, you know, you would think that some businesses would learn from that because they know how quickly stuff spreads on social media. Mm. And and I've, you know, I've seen a couple of things recently, um, locally, where somebody was very disgruntled about service that they got at a particular establishment, and within. A couple of hours. It was out, yeah. It was out, and, and hundreds of people then knew. Yeah. And that must seriously affect the trade for that business. Now, you know, you, you as it's easy to do the damage so quickly and so so difficult to repair, you would think that businesses now would perhaps take a little bit more care and, yes, it's and not, be a bit more aware of it. It's not usually the business owners. It's the people who work for them. Mm, oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Now, I believe, Roger, you're also involved with the town team. Can you enlighten us a little bit on your involvement in that? Yes, the uh, Selsey town team was set up uh, a couple of years ago uh, as a result of the Mary Porter's review of the high streets. And they managed to get uh, a grant, an award of £10,000. Um, and the idea of was that that money would be used as an investment to um, do things that would improve the high street. Um, now that went on for about two years, but of course the, the role, the aims of the town team were very similar to the aims of the Selsey Business Partnership. Um, they spent quite a bit of that money on a variety of, of projects and, and uh, uh, things that uh, went on in the high street over that time. But uh, after two years it was decided that having two organisations trying to do the same thing really wasn't going to work. So uh, the begin uh, the, towards the end of last year the town team merged with the Selsey Business Partnership. So we now just have one organisation okay, yeah. who has at their heart the interests of 
all businesses in Selsley and also the high street in particular under the town team. And the money they had left was transferred to us and is, um, it is a ring fence by the Selsley Business Partnership to be spent on events or as investments that are for things that will help improve our town centre. And the next big event that we're planning to sort of carry on from D-Day last year is uh, Smuggler's Day. Smuggler's Day will take place on the Sunday, the 24th of May. Um, and it'll be just like D-Day. We're going to take over the whole high street. We're going to have people dressed up as smugglers and dressed up in all sorts of fancy dress. We're going to have entertainments. We're going to have loads of fun. And we're hoping that that will bring, just like D-Day did, thousands into the high street. Mm. Um, to enjoy a day of fun, and, and it was—I have to say—it was a real day of fun. It was it, yeah. the D-Day thing was was excellent, and, and as I said a couple of weeks ago in, in an interview that I did, that we are so lucky to have that sort of thing happening. Yeah, and there Selsley. are two people we should we should thank for that: Teresa, who ran the shop at Delightful Things Are Us, and yeah. Lynn, who who, who runs uh, Tuppany Rice, were the Lynn main. We know, Lynn, we know well. I know they were main driving force behind that, and uh, really, it was a fabulous day. But we not want to try and repeat that sort of thing every year, so it becomes part of the Selsey Selsey calendar. Mm, yeah, well, it, it it certainly, I mean, it attracted a lot of people from outside Selsey. I mean, we've always got people from outside Selsey because they come down to Bun Leisure. Mm. But uh, but part of the reason they come to Bun Leisure, of course, is because of this sort of thing that goes on in Selsey. And, and they they love Selsey for what it is. Indeed, and yeah. uh, you know, and, and I think we all do, and we and we all guard it too jealously. But I'm getting on my soapbox about that again. <laughs> um, we're also, but what I would say is that we are we are, Selsey Business Partnership is here to try and help and support businesses and to and to make Selsey a great place to do trade. So if anyone's got ideas for us, anyone's um, got any thoughts about how what we can do, we would love to hear from it. We have a Facebook page. And people can leave us messages there. I do know from the report we did last week on Sales Incent Radio that there are changes afoot for several shops in the uh, high street at the moment and, and new things coming in, which uh, a lot of people have said, well, we haven't got this. Well, you might just have it in the very near future if you, uh, if you look around and pay attention. Yeah. But, well, there, um, and there's, a bit, there's a bit of anxiety about some proposed developments coming up, possibly. Um, but, you know, I think we have to harness whatever happens to Selsey and try and use it to make Selsey a better place. Um, we, we've taken, um, we haven't fallen on either side of the fence in terms of this new this new development that's been proposed uh, because some of our members are for it, some of our members are against it. So so we're just keeping a middle road and we will make the best of whatever uh, we find ourselves ending up. Yes, with. if it's going to bring business into the community or if it's going to bring money into the community, some people are going to suffer, obviously. Some of the smaller businesses, or some businesses selling the same stuff as as does or whoever yeah. takes it on. Um, and, and so, yes, yeah, some are going to suffer, and I can understand that they would be... Yeah, it's hard to know. I mean, about. when I worked for Waitrose, I was involved in the opening of a number of new stores, and generally, the effect of a new supermarket in a small town was beneficial, generally, mm. Um, mm. because it bought footfall. And uh, the one thing a trader needs is footfall. Mm. Oh, absolutely. I was, uh, before I moved down here, I lived in Windsor and they opened a great big Tesco just around the corner from me. Uh, oh, and there was untold uproar about it and, and people saying, well, you know, it's not needed. It's not needed. But of course, the minute they opened the doors, the car park was full. Mm. If it's not needed, why are all these people here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a simple equation. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not needed, it will go skin. Yes. <laughs> um, but of course... All the all the shops that were going to shut down because of it actually are still open. Now it's mm. ten, twelve years later. Um, they all managed to survive, and yeah. they, you know they all managed to uh, eke out a living. So, uh, well, we have to wait and see what the future brings. But if if they do come here, then it's really important that businesses uh, up their game and, and harness the additional footfall it might bring here. Mm. Um, mm. We will, we will see what happens. We will indeed, and maybe we'll talk about that at a later date. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for coming in today. No, you're very welcome. It's been giving us the benefit of your, your wisdom, as it were, um, and any future ventures that you might decide to go into, because do, you don't strike me as a man that's going to sit around and do very little for very long. No, so uh, good luck with, with everything for the future, and well, certainly for the Selsey Business Partnership. Well, thank you very much. And uh, as I said, if your listeners... Uh, have ideas for us about the village, about the town, and what we can do to help. You very nearly said village there. So. I nearly did. Well, it feels like a village to me. 
it's yeah. a, it's an argument I have all the time. Yeah. For me, it's a village. Yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah. But uh, okay, anyway, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you. Bye now. Well, that was Roger Barrow, a very interesting individual. I'm sure there was much more that he could have told us, and uh, maybe we'll get him back in in the not too distant future. Squeeze some more information out of him. I would just like to give a mention to the up and coming fundraising event that I have planned. It is to raise money for Macmillan nurses. It'll be held at the town hall. The planned date is the 7th of March and tickets will be on sale in about two weeks time. So if you'd like to have tickets for that, you can get them from High House Insurance on the High Street, who have kindly offered their services as a box office and come along and have a good evening's entertainment in the company of some very talented entertainers. More information will, of course, be available once everything has been confirmed. Right, well, unfortunately, Lynn Reeve has decided to take a few weeks' break from Sales Internet Radio. She is an awfully busy lady, and she's got a lot of things to get on with, so have a nice rest, Lynn. Hope to see you again in the not-too-distant future. But, of course, in the few weeks I've worked with Lynn, I've learned so much from her, but I think I'm now a cook. And so I'm going to try and read the recipe and see how you get on with it. Right, what we're going to do this week is an Italian pasta and kidney bean soup. And this is what we need. These are the ingredients to serve four people. So you could cut them if there was only two of you, I guess. Or do it my way, cook it all and eat twice as much. And right, what we need is one onion, two garlic cloves, 200 grams of celery, two tablespoons full of olive oil, don't buy the cheap stuff, two tins of peeled tomatoes in sauce, 500 millilitres of vegetable stock, one tablespoon of tomato puree, two bay leaves, one teaspoon of oregano, or oregano, as the Americans would say, and salt and pepper, one to two teaspoons of sugar, one tin of kidney beans, 200 grams of penne pasta, and some fresh mixed herbs. Now the name penne pasta, of course, refers to the type of pasta, the shape, and not the cost. Right, and this is what we have to do. Peel and chop the onion and garlic cloves, Wash and chop the celery, leaving the leaves for later use. Fry the onions, garlic and celery in a little oil until they soften. Add the tomatoes with sauce and vegetable stock to the pan. Stir in the tomato puree, bay leaves and oregano. Season with salt and pepper and sugar and bring to the boil. Place a lid on the pan and leave to simmer for 15 minutes and then remove the bay leaves. Right, now we have to drain the kidney beans. Bring a pot of salted water to the boil and add pasta. Leave to boil for 11 minutes or until al dente. Drain the pasta, then add the soup along with the beans. Season to taste, rinse off the celery leaves and mixed herbs. Chop them up and add them to the soup and serve immediately. What could be easier? Wonderful Italian pasta and kidney bean soup. Well, I shan't give up my day job and become a chef. Right, in our final item this week, Mike Nichols tells us about some of the fitness facilities or sports facilities that are available in and around Selsey. Over to you, Mike. Thank you. This is just a brief update about some of the things that go on in our town of a sporting or exercise kind, because often after Christmas, we all have a feeling that we ought to get somehow fitter or take a bit more exercise. Whilst it's true that if you want a specialist sport like fencing, or join a very successful club like a rugby club in Chichester, then the city is the place that you might need to go. Uh, if you want league basketball, then at the moment you have to go to Bognor and, and, and so on. So there are some sporting activities that you have to travel for, but there are increasing activities and sports in Selsey of all kinds. And I'd just like to give you a little indication of what's available. Perhaps first of all to say that on the sells the information exchange or the sports stream website there are directories of activities with contact details so that if you are interested in something then you can always find out what is available from those kind of sources i think it's true to say that sometimes we can feel diminished in terms of the importance of our sports clubs so I just want to talk for a moment about the qualities, for instance, of our local football and cricket clubs. You may not know, for instance, that at the moment, Selsey Football Club and Selsey Seals Football Club not only run teams for six-year-olds through to uh, adults, 
Uh, but they actually have playing now more people than of ever in their history. At the moment, a youth policy is being pursued by the club, and that means that it's probably going to be two or three years before our first team have the success that they would like. But there are very strong teams in the teenage years, and not only in quantity, but in quality, the clubs have done really well in the last year or two, not only winning uh, a Sussex award for being the best community club, but they have one of their coaches for the under-12 team, Alan Lamborn, who won a regional award for his coaching. Uh, Bernie Morrie was the Sussex Volunteer of the Year in football, and so on. So we need to take pride in what is not only a historic club, but provides lots of good quality and well-resourced activities. In a similar way, our cricket club has just renewed what's called Club Mark, which is the three-year award for being a well-run and safe club. And last year they ran teams, nine in all, uh, for men and women, boys and girls. And interestingly enough, the ladies' team was their most successful team, reaching the final of the Sussex Cup. So these two clubs, which are next to each other on the recreation ground and football ground behind Budgeons, uh, not only do a good job, but they are looking together to build new facilities and uh, those plans are going to planning permission even as we speak. Now you might not be interested in team sports but uh, in this month there is a new activity uh, I think called Legs, Bums and Tums. It's another uh, contribution for those little things like Pilates and Zumba that helps to get you fit. Um, if you like it there is a specialist uh, kickboxing activity now available for all ages in Selsey. There are also long-standing clubs like our many bowls clubs that not just operate in the summer but there are the indoor bowls clubs in the winter. We have our local tennis club at Crablands and in addition to all these things and many many more for children, young people and adults in the community, our three schools locally do a great job in sport running about 26 lunchtime or after school clubs in various sports and activities, all of which are really helping children and young people to not just develop their skills and to feel that they can be part of a team sport, but also to combat obesity and uh, to encourage young people to get into habits of good physical exercise. Uh, of course, in addition, our schools have their own curriculum uh, sports activities and quite recently the coach at Seal School Neil Sherlock won a community award in the Chichester Observer Award event. So uh, local sport is in good heart and there's an awful lot going on and if you'd like to find out any more then 01243 201 616 and we'll happily pass on information. Well thank you for that Mike. You mentioned all the places I need to avoid places that are good for me and get me fit. And that's our final item for this week, so there's nothing more for me to say than look forward to seeing you again next time. This is Keith Barnes for Selsey Internet Radio saying goodbye and thank you for listening.